Where it stands right now is, it's been a month. Um, she was killed, she was murdered on June the 18th, and today is July the 20th. There still has not been an arrest. It seems that the police are making some progress in this investigation from just what little bit is being shared on social media. But you also have to keep in mind, they are being tight-lipped. They have had a meeting with her family, along with the, her family's attorneys and um, other officials concerning the 911 calls. That's been the biggest controversy of this, and this is a sad thing to say, that this controversy surrounding the 911 situation seems to have outweighed and taken away from the fact that this woman was brutally murdered, brutalized, um, uh, stabbed 11 times, her throat cut deeply, almost decapitated, stabbed in her face. This was a very personal thing. Now, after listening to the Nancy Grace podcast, it was stated that she didn't have any defensive wounds because I was assuming that somebody who's fighting, somebody right on top of them, stabbing them in that manner, is going to have wounds on their arms, forearms, elbows, hands. But, and I can't confirm that. This is just what was said on the Nancy Grace podcast. So it would almost seem like the first blow, the first and maybe it's possible that her throat was cut the first, you know, action. And this might have been rendered her unable to fight back. It, it may have been from behind, and it could have been that someone came up on her from behind and, and did this. I don't know. I'm just, you know, speculating. Hopefully... People are really, really, I mean, as outraged as everybody has been about this, they're becoming more outraged over the fact that nobody has been arrested yet. We know that there were five other people in that home. One thing that was mentioned on the Justice for Amber page, and I don't know how accurate this is, is that we we knew that the um, chief of Prestonsburg City Police, a man named Randy Woods, we knew that he resigned shortly after this took place, and it was, it was told, I'm reading this from WYMT, I'm going to see what it says about his resignation, this is dated June 27th, so basically about eight days after this woman died. Um, he was only the chief of police of Prestonsburg for two years. And it just says, Prestonsburg City uh, Police Chief Randy Woods has resigned. Mayor Les Stapleton confirmed this with WYMT. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve with the men and women at Prestonsburg, and I appreciate the opportunity to serve the citizens. The decision did not come lightly and has weighed heavily on me and my family since the horrific events of June 30th, 2022. Now what he's referring to there is that I had mentioned this in a previous video that I did. Four police officers, uh, three police officers and a canine uh, dog were killed in a shootout in Floyd County. They were called, they were called to a home with a possible domestic dispute police showed up he just started to fire on them and three three people died and several others were wounded several other police officers this included Kentucky, members of the Kentucky State Police members of the Prestonsburg City Police and members of the Floyd County Sheriff's Department and um, this is what he's referring to But he just says the announcement comes days before the anniversary of this horrific shooting in Allen, 
that killed three officers and a canine. Now, he doesn't go into any details about why he's resigning, but like I said, it was mentioned on a Facebook post on the Justice for Amber Facebook page that Kyle's or, you know, they they had, um, the Kentucky State Police had issued warrants for um, electronic devices from the people that were in the home that night. And it was said this was supposed to have been some um, information that came from the Kentucky State Police, although that is not confirmed by them. As far as I know, this has been something that someone said. So if this is incorrect, I just want people to know I'm just going by what is being told on these pages. And since the post was not taken down by the moderators of the page, I'm assuming that maybe there is some truth to it. But it was said that when the first 911 call was made, the person on the phone said there were people in the home intoxicated and that there had been some fighting going on and they needed the police to come. And it was said that the homeowner took the phone and got on the phone and said, this is, everything's under control. We don't need anybody to come out. Um, just disregard this call. And that apparently the police did disregard the call because from what I understand, nobody went out on that first call. Because had they, they would have found her, you know, this situation much sooner. But it was said that two minutes after this phone call ended, the homeowner's phone called this chief of police, Randy Woods. And people are speculating that he called him directly because they probably knew each other. This homeowner is also a dentist in the area. He's a business owner. He said to have, you know, connections, I guess. And it was just reported that he had called this man's phone. Now, whether this police officer did anything, whether he said, okay, let me come over there and see what's going on, and maybe he was the one who later called 911, I don't know. I don't even know if he went to that house. So I'm not, like, pointing any finger at him. I'm just saying this is what was reported. But they did talk about the 911 call, and they said that I, it was, I think, several hours after that call came in that the second 911 call was made that they had, this person was deceased. There's also been uh, some people saying that it was possibly an attempted cleanup, that when the Kentucky State Police and the medical examiner arrived and started to do you know, to um, secure this crime scene and start to take samples and, and stuff like that, that it did look like someone may have attempted a cleanup. And it's possible that there was just so much blood that they just knew that they weren't going to be able to do that. And what were they going to tell the police when they showed up and this woman's body is laying there with 11 stab wounds in her throat? split almost in half and they're going to say where's all the blood you know they definitely would have known that there had been an attempted and and was somebody going to attempt to take this woman's body out of that house is that a, a possibility um the people i'm telling you it just goes to show you and i i may be wrong here i may be speaking out of turn but it just goes to show you that sometimes alcohol or other substances that might have been used that night and, um, t you know, tempers can flare and I don't know what took place here. Now they're saying, there's also some, some people speaking on the page just saying that her friend Roy Kidd did have some cuts. Now, is it possible that he murdered her? This person that he had been friends with all these years? Or is it possible that these cuts came from the person stabbing her and that he was trying to intervene? Maybe he was trying to grab at the knife. Maybe he maybe he 
was the first person to be attacked, and she intervened to try to get in between these two, and then she got the worst of it. I don't know. I only know what people share, and I only know what the police have shared. Like I said, I was just going through this to look. People in Floyd County and the city of Prestonsburg had went from bad to worse. The new acting police chief is also the director of public safety who is in charge of the 911 center. He was also the man in charge of spearheading the contract between the county and the city to remove 911 from the state police. He is also the brother-in-law of the recently resigned chief of police. Floyd Countyans, we demand justice. I am asking you to contact Mayor Les Stapleton and demand that Ross Shirtliff resign. They're just saying that this is what they call, they deem the good old boy system, meaning if you're kin to somebody, if you're buddies with somebody, if you play golf with them, go to the same church, your kids go to the same school, you might hang out at the same restaurants and know the same people, have the same circles, you're going to get these jobs. This is what, and this is, you know, I hate to say it myself, but it's very true. And this is just the way it is around these small towns. So this person says, Ross Shirtliff was fired from Pikeville, and the deputy coroner that was on the scene of Amber's death was a licensed EMT who got fired and lost his license because of drugs. My point is, why does Floyd County have to take rejects for these important jobs? It's like they are pushed down our throats. Floyd County deserves better. Colin the mayor won't do any good because they are good friends. And the previous chief would have won the sheriff's election. Ross was going to be the next police chief. I can tell you from experience the Ross is the worst that anyone can have in that office. And he is backed 100% by the mayor. So I'm just going to move on from all that. This is just where this mind, this is just where the people's minds are right now. People every day, like this one woman said, we wake up every morning and we check the news to see, have they arrested anybody yet? Why is taking them so long? You know, I don't know, but I just wanted to give that update. That's all I can really say about it right now. So this friend of, of hers, this, this man that she had been friends with, he was an x-ray technician. And the homeowner and the, place, uh, the person whose home this was, that this took place in, was a, is a dentist. So someone is on here saying, can you imagine walking into needing an x-ray and this man walks into the room? And you're wondering, did he murder his friend? Was he involved in this? And if he didn't, and she was really a true friend to him in life, why isn't he talking? Who's he covering for? Is he afraid for his own life? This has been a question. This may also be a question as to why the two other people at that home that night were not, you know, outed or, or made public their names. Is it because they are asking for protection from the police? Maybe they are talking. But I think if somebody was talking and there had been an eyewitness who was willing to talk, there would have been an arrest made by now. And... What about, my friend and I were having this conversation the other night. My friend used to live in the Arkansas Creek area where this took place in Floyd County. And he actually knows some of the family members of this man. And he was just saying, imagine what the trial is going to be like. Right there in little small Floyd County where this man has all this pool and is well known and look at everything that's going on with the chief of police and the controversy around the 911 and the mayor and the fact that the person appointed to act as, as police chief is also the person who wanted to take the 911 system from the state police and move it to Prestonsburg. 
and was also responsible for the public safety, which he was not very good at that job, in my opinion. And so the trial, in my opinion, would need to be moved. Maybe it, they would need to move it a little farther away from eastern Kentucky. But I don't know if they would do that or not, you know. If they didn't think that these people... If these people say, I don't think I can get a fair trial here, but they wouldn't be the ones... They would probably think, okay, I'm so well-liked, and I, it took them so long to arrest me that they were so unsure of my involvement in this that a jury would probably take my side. I don't know. These are these are my personal thoughts, and I want to state that clearly. Um, the things that I've talked about, the 911 call and all that is stuff that is, was posted on the Justice for Amber Facebook page. And um, I just, I'll wrap this video up and just say that I do hope if they do, make an arrest soon. I have a very short follow-up on the um, story of missing man Josh Woodhams from Lexington, Kentucky. This is the first article that I have seen about him in a few days. And this was posted July the 18th. Human remains found Saturday morning beneath the Clay's Furry Bridge have not yet been positively identified. And they also found another body Monday near Versailles Road, the Fayette County Coroner Gary Jen said. Jen said he is working with the medical examiner, a DNA lab, and another agency to identify the remains found near the bridge through the help of dental records. Another unidentified body found at 8.45 p.m. Monday in a, in a wooded area in the 2000 block of Versailles Road is also pending an autopsy for age, race, and gender. The person's cause of death in each is, instant is also under investigation. Jen said a man found the remains under the bridge on Saturday in a very wooded area and that this particular person was a friend of Josh Woodham's who had been out helping to search for him. His phone last pinged on June the 18th at around 3 a.m. near the Claysbury Bridge. This is from Fox 56. Officials relying on DNA analysis to identify human remains found near Claysbury Bridge. The Fayette County Coroner has released new information regarding the skeletal remains Gary Jen, Fayette County Coroner, told 56 Fox News that they still don't have a, a positive identification. Jen said that fingerprints were not an option. It is believed they'd be able to identify the human remains through dental records. However, they also believe that they, were, that they would be able to determine through DNA analysis. Um, I'm almost certain that this is the body of Josh Woodhams because I want to read to you a post from his wife's Facebook page. And this is the last thing that was posted. And I've not seen anything else on any other news outlets. I'm sure that they used the DNA of his children. I, I'm not sure if the article mentioned if he had living parents or siblings, they may have used DNA through them to determine, but he did have children, so they probably were able to use DNA to make a quick identification. But here is what um, she posted on July 18th. Despite the devastation that his departure has left, Josh was the embodiment of how to live life well. Although he no longer walks among us, the light that he put into this world can never be extinguished. The love Josh gave will continue. It is carried in the hearts of his wife, children, family, and friends. Please join us as we come to celebrate the life of Joshua David Woodhams. No, no other comments. No saying, you know, 
what they believe may have happened to him. As I read a little bit about his wife, I see that she is a counselor. She uh, studied psychology, counseling, and she worked as a veterans, a type of counselor for veterans. And it was stated here that Josh Woodhams was a veteran of the U.S. Air Force. So is it possible that he was going through some kind of um, post-traumatic stress or something of that nature? Maybe they will come out later with that information. And this is basically all that there was on him. And I just wanted to give a little update on both of these stories, the, the uh, Amber Spradlin and Josh Woodhams. If any more information is posted in the next few days, I will do an, another follow-up. But I am going to be moving on and doing uh, some different videos. And basically, that's all there was on, on that story, on either of these two stories. Um, thanks for watching.